Hey guys, this is just going to be a quick video uh, about one of my newest uh, CRT acquisitions here. Now, last month for me was like a really good month for picking up displays. Uh, I ended up picking up, uh, this is what I did my last video on, the uh, 310, the Sony, one of the, considered one of the best uh, CRT SD sets. Um, I picked up a, it's not here, it's in storage right now, but a big nice, it's a 22 inch Dimantron PC VGA monitor. And uh, I actually got this guy here, which is a PVM. Which is, <sighs> yeah, he's barking at himself. Anyways, uh, so this is the Sony PVM 20 M2 MDU. So this is like, this was mostly used for uh, medical things. Um, if you guys remember a while back, I did another video on a uh, 20, this is a 20 inch. Um, I got it, I previously was using a 14 inch, uh, which was great. That thing was a great PVM. Uh, I did a video on that, uh, I'll link it. Uh, you can check that video out. And that was, that was a great monitor and it actually did, that was one of the few CRT PVMs that could actually do HD. So it did, uh, it did 480p, it did 720p, it did 1080i. Um, unfortunately for me, I, I felt I never used the like the HD resolutions on it, and I the 14 inch was just a little bit too small for my liking, uh, especially for a little bit later systems like Saturn and stuff, which and PlayStation, which I felt uh, do a little bit better on bigger screen. I think that's more than nostalgia on my part talking, but I I just enjoy those systems on a larger screen. So I did find a 20 inch PVM for a really good price a while back, but <laughs> unfortunately. After about a week, it had a problem with color shift. It will just, you play it for, you know, 10 to 15 minutes and the colors shift to like blue. The colors are just off and I don't know if it's a, a cap capacitor problem, but um, I can't find schematics for the thing and uh, I haven't been able to fix it. So um, luckily I was able to get this. The larger PVM models are getting scarce. Uh, the, the Genie's been out of the bottle on these things in the retro gaming community for a while now. So they are getting hard to find, especially the larger screen models. I was able to, only able to find this because I belong to a local RGB like enthusiast group and um, we found a surgical equipment company warehouse place uh, that had a small stockpile of them and we were able to buy them all in a group buy. So I was able, actually able to get this thing at a little bit below market price sort of thing. So that was really nice. Otherwise I probably wouldn't have found one of these anytime soon. Um, so this monitor is pretty cool. It meets my requirements, pretty high quality. Uh, made in the 2000s, I believe, early 2000s. It's a little bit heavy and I've already did a video on the PVM so I don't really feel the need to like pull this thing out and turn it around and show you the back of it. But I'll, I'll talk about, uh, it's basically the same thing. It has BNC connectors, but the really cool thing about this model is it has two RGB connectors, RGB slash component connectors on the back. So you can actually uh, hook up two systems at once in RGB or one component and one RGB and use uh, like a switch box, which is really cool. I really like that feature. Um, I also really like, now on my 14 inch, um, there wasn't like buttons on it. You had to, everything was done with like a side panel and you, you'd hit it and they'd light up and then you'd have to go through on the screen. I like how you just have buttons here. So if I want to switch to like RGB2, I just hit that button. Uh, yeah, here's RGB1, A and B, uh, like composite or SV. I like, I like the buttons, it's just in the dial. It's just quicker and easier than like going through an on-screen menu. Um, so I really like that. It does have a built-in speaker. Um, we got a degauss button. Um, I think that says reset. There's a split button for the RGB that I have no idea what it does. Um, there is a more comprehensive menu you can go into here. And we've got underscan and overscan. Now, um, geez, I forget his name at the moment, but there, there's a guy with a YouTube channel. And he did do a video on this specific monitor. Maybe I will link to that in the description too. If you want a little bit more detailed look at this thing, but I just kind of wanted to show it off. It's it's pretty cool. I'm really happy about this. This. Where it's sitting though, it probably isn't its permanent home. It's a little bit awkward. Like I said, I've said many times I have a space problem. <laughs> and um, like laying down here, it's great having the big screen there playing on that. Um, I haven't used the same, I'm, I think I'm gonna replace that with like a, 
a plasma, a small plasma, basically just for like 480p stuff, like widescreen 480p, like Wii and stuff. Um, I, I, I don't know. I was thinking about moving that up there and getting another thing or swapping these because it's a little awkward with my head being there and I'm just like laying on my side and it's very uncomfortable and the screen's really close. Um, or maybe even lifting it up somehow, something underneath it. But um, I'm just gonna turn it on, show you it in action real quick, and then we'll end this video. All right, so it's probably really dark now. Uh, turning that on, and then I'm gonna turn, there's just the little power button right here, and we're gonna turn the monitor on. There we go, is that great degaussing sound? And then I'm gonna hit, we got the master system hooked up in RGB. I just think this thing looks phenomenal. Uh, again, capturing this through the video camera, you can't really see the real beauty of it, but I just, I love the look at this set. Just great. I am really happy with this. Yeah, so, so, and then we've got our over scan and under scan going on here. Uh, so you do have those options. So yeah, um, it's just a really nice display. It's it's kind of just the right size in my opinion, uh, 19 to 20 inch. For, in my opinion, it's, it's just about the right size for a nice CRT. Uh, it's a good thing between like sharpness and so weight and, and just screen size, in my opinion. Um, and like I said, the thing I really love about this is the dual RGB slash component in, on the back, as opposed to on my previous monitors, there's just one. So if you wanted to do like switch to something that was using component, you had to kind of like you know, pull it and redo it, but this way you can have a component system and an RGB or even like two RGB and components and it's just, I really like that. So uh, that's about all for this. This was just a quick, quick video, just a quick overview, just to, you know, show you guys a uh, little bit of new equipment here. Uh, I definitely recommend picking up this model, uh, the 20M2 MDU, if you come across it for a good price. A uh, good price, I would say, at these days is probably sub $200. Uh, you used to be able to grip these things at like under 100 but you know, prices on PVMs have gone through the roof like a lot of retro gaming stuff. Um, so it's probably only going to go up. I mean, I assume one day the retro gaming bubble for consoles is going to bust, uh, but PVMs with their scarcity, I, I don't see them uh, coming down in value ever. Um, so yeah, uh, the only thing I don't like about it, I, I do prefer, you probably can't see it in the dark, because I do prefer the darker uh, kind of like bezel of the regular PVM units as opposed to this like white gray bezel that you probably can't see because it's dark. Um, but I think that's probably just because this one was really meant to be medical equipment. So I guess it matches the, the sterile white of a hospital, maybe. <laughs> so, uh, again, thanks for watching. Check out the links in the description below. And uh, subscribe if you like this kind of content. And thanks for watching.